and welcome to the Inner City Regeneration Business Investment Webinar with myself, Fifi Peters. We would like to extend a, a special welcome to our guests from the African continent as well as the United States of America. And I can tell you that in the next two hours, we will essentially be engaging with experts from both sides of the globe to highlight how the state of businesses in New York and Africa, how they can uh, certainly seize the opportunity to discuss the uh, ways to strengthen local economies, to create jobs, and also to close racial wealth gaps. So themed around inner city regeneration, focusing mainly on property development and infrastructure, the oceans economy, tourism, and the cultural economy sectors. Uh, today's uh, speakers will also use this platform to explore potential collaborations and investments. It is important, of course, to note that all of this is happening on a very important day for the citizens of the United States of America. It is the day that legendary freedom fighter Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. And uh, hosting this uh, online webinar on the 4th of April holds a significant purpose uh, with the USA as they commemorate this day. And of course, we are on the African continent commemorate it with them. But to get things going, we are going to start the uh, webinar by inviting the Honorable Councillor Ngolisi Kawunda, who is the uh, Mayor of the Etekwini Municipality. He is uh, standing by to give us the welcome address and also to unpack the purpose of this event even further. Mayor, we are certainly looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Fifi and uh, all dignitaries present, the Senator James Sender and Chair Banking State of the New York, uh, Honorable Wayne Smith, Business and Investment Consultant and former Mayor of Irvington, New Jersey, Mr. Walter Mosley, former New York uh, State Representative and Senior Business Advisor, uh, Tewini Municipality Councilor, um, Tim Wood Uli, the chairperson of Economic Development and Planning uh, Committee, our city manager leading the entire uh, uh, administration of the city, Reverend Dennis Dylon, uh, co convener, resurgence conference, Dr. George uh, Fraser, <coughs> uh, president uh, of Power Networking Conference and New York Times best selling author. Uh, Mr. Vivian Reddy, the Executive Chairman of Edison Corporation. Uh, Mr. Dembe, uh, who is the Co-Chair of uh, KZN Growth Coalition. Uh, Mr. Sandy Lezungu, the Chairman of Zungu Investment. Um, all other dignitaries present, business representatives. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and good evening. It is a distinct honor for me and a privilege to welcome you all to this crucial meeting, which provides a platform for us to find innovative ways to build more resilient and economically sustainable cities. What makes this webinar even more significant for us uh, is that it takes place on the day where the world commemorates the assassination of our international strike icon, a revolutionary Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We want to take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the contribution he made in the struggle for liberation for all the oppressed people around the world. We want to thank the organizers for bringing together the caliber of leaders from different sectors of society to fully participate in this webinar. Our main goal should be the strengthening of global solidarity of the development of cities of the future for the next generation to enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it's a is a unique is in a unique position that we are 60% rural informal settlement and townships. And most of these areas had no water and sanitation infrastructure before 1994 due to apartheid special development framework. While we have made great strides as government uh, that leads South Africa in expanding access to these basic services, the constant movement of people flocking into the city has made the housing and other infrastructural backlogs a moving target. As the only metro in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, we attract a lot of people from neighboring municipalities 
provinces and uh, neighboring countries. <clears throat> In response, we are continuously engaging our other municipalities by sharing some of our ideas in an effort to resuscitate their economies. We are also redirecting some of the major investments uh, to rural and township communities so that people who are residing in those areas, they can access jobs and economic opportunities where they live. Just like any other metropolitan city in the world, Etewin is facing a huge challenge of the ever increasing number of homeless people. The city received 3.6 million rents uh, from the Mayor's Migration Council to profile homeless people through a new portal that we have developed as a city that will include uh, profiling uh, migrants that are coming in the city with the view of getting them uh, off the streets, those who are homeless, uh, also profiling programs and pockets of intervention that will be able to assist those who are living under the bridges and Soon we'll be unveiling a center which uh, will be providing counseling, hot meals, family restoration programs, and drug rehabilitation. We are also in the process of identifying more sites where homeless people can be relocated permanently in our municipality. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that economic exclusion leads to high levels of inequality, crime, and under development. Therefore, for us to create a conducive environment for investments and economic growth in the city, we must ensure that we build structures that promote uh, easy access to mainstream economy for all our citizens, uh, our residents in Etewe. This will go a long way in creating peace and stability, social cohesion in the city, and reduce the high levels of crime and social ills that are plaguing our community. We know that when there is peace and stability, investors are encouraged to invest and help grow the economy, which in turn creates much needed economic opportunities and jobs. Part of our efforts to create a safer and improved quality of life for the city's residents, we are forging ahead with uh, investing in smart city initiatives where we use technology to detect and prevent crime before it happens. We recently undertook a massive repair and upgrade of our CCTV cameras <clears throat> across the city, especially in the crime hotspots. Ladies and gentlemen, we are confident that this will allow law enforcement agencies to adequately coordinate their responses and bring a sense of safety to the public. Some of you may may be aware that our city has been engulfed by a series of natural disasters, including severe floods, uh, COVID-19, and we all know over a period uh, of five years. It is our hope that we can use such platforms to share some valuable lessons that our partners elsewhere in the world have learned over the years in relation to building smarter and stronger uh, when we are rebuilding after the natural disasters. <clears throat> For instance, these natural disasters that you have seen in our city have highlighted the critical need for robust and resilient infrastructure. Hence, we have committed to investing in building structures and systems that can withstand extreme weather events. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, let us use today's uh, webinar as a catalyst to bring together organizations, uh, government agencies, investors, the financial sector, and community organizations to work towards a common goal of growing our cities uh, for the benefit of everyone. Key to the efforts uh, of growing the city's economy is the revitalization of our inner city and the secondary towns uh, to position Devon as a premier destination in, for investment and tourism. To realize this goal, we have embarked on a comprehensive regeneration, a regeneration strategy aimed at renewing, restoring, and growing the inner city. One of the key pillars of the regeneration strategy is tackling the issues of problem building, the bad building that uh, do not reflect a good image of and the current 
strength of our city. Since 2019, the city has achieved significant progress in tackling building-related uh, challenges. Uh, some of the strides that we have made uh, uh, in as the city include refurbishment of 22 buildings, the demolition of nine structures uh, given a go ahead by courts, and intervention in five buildings to resolve dangerous situations. Additionally, 18 hijacked buildings have been returned to their rightful owners and administrators have been appointed for six buildings in our municipality. Ladies and gentlemen, also key to our strategy uh, are catalytic projects such as marina development, the central development, and the Devon Film City. These projects uh, with their substantial investment values and social uh, social economic impacts are forced to transform the face of our city, attracting investor interest and driving economic growth in our municipality. Other projects uh, we have implemented recently include the upgrade of the point precinct and the renewal of the river town area. The public land improvement project is an example of how we want to turn around the CPT and our secondary CPT. Recently, we have invested more than 280 million rands just to deal with the upgrades uh, of our infrastructure, special bulk water, sanitation, and uh, electricity pipes uh, underneath. And we have also allocated more than 300 million rands uh, to rehabilitate one of the biggest roads coming in the, uh, to the city called M4. Uh, that road is now it's outbound. It's now being rehabilitated. Uh, soon we'll be introducing a contractor to rehabilitate the inbound uh, of this uh, big road that uh, traverse people from different areas on the south, as well as the industrial zone, which is also con concentrated on the south. In conclusion, the advent of COVID-19 and rapid spread of disease was a reminder of how interconnected all of us are as a global citizen, and we, we joined hands to fight this pandemic. <clears throat> Maybe before I conclude, we are also making a serious investment uh, in terms of uh, resuscitating our infrastructure. When you talk about wastewater uh, uh, treatment plants, uh, we've allocated uh, billions of rents to ascertain that we become more responsive to the plight of our people when it comes to the shortages of water. We have also allocated money to build new reservoirs uh, to upsize our water pipes so that uh, we are able to supply uh, areas which uh, have water shortages, as well as the um, construction of the biggest dam that will bring at least uh, the reinforcement in terms of the water sources in the city, uh, where we have allocated, we are, we are going to be allocating 28 billion rand for the construction of that dam, that will also be a feeder to other surrounding municipalities uh, around the, our city, effectively. Issues faced by cities all over the world are similar and require a concerted effort to address. It is our hope that through various partnerships, we'll develop a stronger alliance which seeks to make our world a better place for all. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He is the mayor of the Etekwini municipality for delivering that welcome address. Essentially, for us to push on on these conversations we're having throughout the next two hours, essentially about resilient cities and building the capacity to make cities more resilient. I now call upon the uh, Senator James Sander, the uh, Chair of the Bank of Banking in the State of New York, to deliver uh, his opening marks. And Senator, I believe it's Good morning to you, sir. <laughs> Good morning from America. We are very pleased to be here uh, with such an incredible uh, panel and to uh, thank the Honorable Mayor for allowing us to, to be here and to thank uh, all of the dignitaries that you will have on here and especially the CNBC Africa audience. I am State Senator James Sanders, Jr. I am the chair of 
the Senate Banking Committee on uh, on banking, of course. And New York State has a budget of two hundred and twenty nine billion dollars uh, a year. And we have more or close to a trillion dollars in our uh, pension fund. These funds are forever looking for uh, rates of return, good places to invest. But we also are interested in doing good things with it. We're, we found that we can do good things and have a good rate of return for the people of New York. One of the areas that we really have not looked at is Africa, and that's uh, that's a shame. And and I'm here to help make the difference. I I believe that uh, in in Africa, one of the places that are uh, most similar to the U.S. is South Africa. So it is a natural that we come together and to see how we can do good for the people of New York by doing good for the people of Africa. So this is what brings me to this conversation. And I thank uh, uh, Pastor Dillon and others for making sure that the good things that we're trying to do in New York are replicated and extended to the people of Africa. Well, Senator, uh, I can tell you as someone who has been in New York, I walk the streets there, particularly the Wall Street, and it kind of looked like home. So you are right in terms of drawing the uh, contrast between the similarities between uh, South Africa and New York. But of course, I uh, believe that uh, the uh, continent and perhaps even the uh, city of Etiquini is excited about the numbers you have just dropped there for us. Uh, so around the uh, trillion uh, dollar uh, budget of the New York Pension Fund that is looking for a home to be impactful as well as a home to generate returns. And the conversation that we're going to have right now is to what degree that home could be the city of Etekwini and specifically the oceans economy. Those of you who have visited Durban will know it has been known for uh, some of the warmest beaches on the African continent, perhaps even in the world. And also it has been known for having some of the uh, most vibrant people. It uh, is also home, lastly, to one of the busiest ports in Africa. So opportunities abound in its oceans and blue economy. The conversation we're having right now was how to ride the waves of that opportunity a lot better. And I would like to invite my panelists and introduce them to you, of course, who will be engaging with me for the next half hour or so, starting with Musa Mbele, the city manager at the ETEC, Winnie Municipality, uh, Sandy Le Zungu, Chairman of uh, the Zungu Investment Company, Moshe Motohi, Managing Executive of the uh, Eastern Region for Transnet National Port Authority, as well as Reverend Dennis uh, Dylan, the co-convener of the Resurgence Conference. Um, good afternoon and good morning to you all. Uh, thanks, of course, uh, so much for uh, joining us uh, on this uh, very important discussion and important platform specifically for the uh, KZN economy and the Etekwini uh, municipality. And so perhaps if I uh, begin with you, just within your role in government uh, at the municipality, if you can just uh, really help us understand, um, Mr. Mbele, exactly what kind of uh, opportunities then the municipality has in store, specifically for uh, New York investors that are potentially looking for a new home? Um, Mr. Mbele, I believe that you are muted, so if you could kindly hit the unmute button. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I apologize for this. I was uh, saying uh, good afternoon uh, to uh, the participants in this conference and good afternoon to you, uh, Fifi, as the facilitator. Uh, and good morning to our colleagues in, in New York. Um, as you have rightly said, there are many opportunities in this uh, city of uh, Etewini, uh, particularly in what we call um, uh, inner city uh, a precinct uh, for potential investment by investors in, uh, in New York and other parts of the United States of 
America. Uh, you have spoken about uh, similarities. Uh, we were in, uh, in New York uh, in the latter part of last year, and we have identified um, a potential investors that can come and invest in Eteguin, particularly when it comes to areas of uh, uh, real estate. We've got strategic parcels of land that are located um, in close uh, proximity to the ocean here. So that presents good opportunities for investment in in uh, in uh, uh, tourism uh, related uh, real estate. <clears throat> However, there are other developments such as uh, the marina, which is planned a multi billion rand um, um, investment that is now being uh, packaged. And uh, we believe that uh, if you look at um, uh, interest, particularly from uh, people in, in New York and in the United States at large, uh, we believe that there will be opportunities, greater opportunities for them uh, to invest here. We've got over um, uh, 200 million US dollars uh, in terms of opportunities for uh, development in just in the inner city uh, precinct, but also in terms of the ocean economy, uh, we are also looking at uh, diversifying uh, public transport. We, we would like to attract investors in things such as water uh, taxi transportation, which is a new um, uh, concept in the continent of Africa. We have seen a couple of other uh, cities in the world that have a thriving uh, water taxi public transportation, and we are fast going to move into that type of investment and we are indeed um, looking forward for investors in that particular space and there are plenty of other um, opportunities uh, Deben is a booming uh, tourist uh, city it has become uh, the rich playground of uh, African continent and um, it is uh, frequented by both uh, national and international uh, visitors which then um, ensures that there is a booming tourism industry. So these are the type of opportunities that we would like our investors in New York and the broader United States to, to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mbella. And perhaps to come back to you, sir, just to uh, maybe further understand the $200 million of opportunity specifically for investors uh, from the uh, U.S. and perhaps elsewhere. You're talking about the fact that you were in New York recently and there were engagements with those uh, investors about the development uh, pipeline that you presented to them. Maybe if you can just give us an, um, a peek into those conversations and perhaps some of the asks from U.S. investors and how you have acted on them. Yeah, we are we are in constant engagement uh, with uh, our partners in the United States uh, under the banner of uh, resurgence uh, uh, program. Uh, Reverend Dillon was uh, in this city a couple of months ago, and we've taken him through a couple of sites which are a potential investment uh, sites. Uh, for instance, we have um, a a, a mixed use a development um, that is planned uh, for some of the vacant uh, plots of land in close proximity uh, to the city. It is a mixed use in terms of retail, office accommodation, residential apartments, and this uh, comes with the related uh, bulk infrastructure which uh, um, can be delivered in partnership uh, with those investors we we are doing the expansion as well of the marine at theme park which is our uh, tourist attraction but there is also a, a point waterfront at development wherein we have uh, invested a lot of uh, money into the hundreds of millions of friends uh, we are now are uh, seeking investors to come and do the top structure uh, developments there also in the form of the mixed use development and then there are plenty of um, opportunities for timeshare developments as well in this part of the world middle income and up market um, housing 
opportunities are the kind of projects that uh, we have. And then we are also looking at further expanding uh, uh, the theme park and do um, uh, diverse uh, theme park opportunities similar to what we see in places like Los Angeles and stuff like that. So those are all opportunities that are in the process of being packaged. Okay, so essentially drawing further uh, similarities between the U.S. and uh, the Etiquini municipality. Reverend uh, Dennis, sir, uh, your name has been mentioned twice already, uh, less than 20 minutes into this uh, event. And I'd like to understand what you think about some of the opportunities and the plans that the Etiquini municipality has on the go. Uh, certainly um, thankful to you, uh, Fifi, for such an awesome job uh, leading and, and guiding uh, this, this session uh, this morning. I just want to quickly, before I respond, uh, on behalf of the New York Christian Times here in New York, as well as the Resurgence uh, Initiative, just really thank and commend uh, the partners for the awesome job. Thank you, um, uh, Mayor, for your leadership and your guidance uh, in in really helping to to move this agenda forward. Uh, the commitment that you have and you've shown and the thoughts you've shared. Uh, City Manager uh, Musa uh, Mobile, grateful to you and, and appreciate uh, the commitment on your part. Uh, as well, no doubt, and certainly all of the key men and women who are in the forefront of this uh, this this mission. I want to also just take a quick moment uh, to to salute the the uh, Global African Network uh, because indeed they have actually uh, been in the forefront of really guiding this and pulling all of the parties and the partners together to move this forward. Yeah, I, I really see a, a, a movement of sort. I, I believe that it is it is so key and critical, uh, particularly now, for uh, there to be the collaboration and the coming together of the African diaspora linking with the continent itself to really move the economic needle forward. And that for me is really the big piece. Uh, I believe that in the absence of um, uh, economic liberation, uh, we're still dealing with some level of economic apartheid. And uh, it, it's a path and it's a journey. So essentially the linking investors from the US uh, uh, with, with opportunities on the continent. I'm happy to hear the, the, the city manager talk about over $200 uh, million in opportunities available in, 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 um, in, in, in the Durban area. And I, that, you know, I've made a couple of trips to Durban. Thank you, uh, city manager and everyone for the guided tour couple of months ago in Durban and wow, the opportunities are just amazing. Um, if I could just quickly speak to um, one aspect as, as we talk about uh, the, the blue economy and, and tourism, I would just touch upon the tourism aspect just for a moment because I think that area is so key that blacks in America, which uh, by the way, uh, represent um, some two point something trillion dollars in buying power. Uh, when we talk about leisure travel, um, you know, blacks in 2019 spent uh, over $110 billion. Uh, that's right before COVID in leisure travel. And uh, for us, the fact that very little of that and 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 the number is so small that it's it's insignificant it's 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 almost you know unmeasurable in terms of how much of that leisure travel how much of that 110 billion dollars actually uh got to africa and very little and certainly how much got to 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 um at, at a weenie, um probably 
little to none. So the, the, the agenda for us is to change that, is how do we work with more, um, again, investors on the U.S. side, business people on the U.S. side, hoteliers on the U.S. side who, who can develop hotel projects, hotel developments uh, along the Durban waterfront, if you will. Um, how do we look at the creation as we talk about uh, real estate development? Uh, and, and again, there are so many aspects to how we can develop um, uh, Timeshare is certainly a very popular thing, particularly for uh, the Black leisure travelers in, in the U.S. And what this does, it doesn't only provide um, and, and, and support the economy as it relates to tourism, but it literally supports the economy as it relates to real estate development. Because at the end of the day, it means that you've got now foreigners that are owning um, uh, a tourist type real estate, uh, we call them timeshares or hotel rooms, if you will. Um, so, so how do we create more of that? And who are some of the, the partners we can bring to the table in, in, in some of these areas? Uh, not to, to negate, of course, the very many other elements around how we facilitate this development. I don't want to keep talking, uh, Fifi, but I, I at least just want to give some insight there. And we're excited about the fact that we are um, in response and return to the delegation from Durban that came to New York in December. Similarly, uh, we're taking a delegation to, uh, to Durban in July. We're excited about that, looking forward to that. A little bit later, I'll probably share a little bit more about that and the many, um, uh, you know, business leaders, clergy leaders, uh, potential investors that are joining from across the U.S. and the Americas on this particular um, call and in this particular conversation, we certainly want to invite them to plan now to make that trip with us in July. So essentially, you're giving uh, Durban a slice of the buying uh, power there that you uh, did display of the uh, Americans, quite a significant amount of money um, that they do spend on uh, leisure travel. And I imagine that the uh, mayor, even listening to this, uh, has got a smile on his face right now. But uh, Reverend uh, Dennis, we will uh, come back to you in just a short while just to find out about uh, your um, visit, your short uh, well, visit in the uh, foreseeable future with that delegation. But I want to uh, bring it back to the investment. And uh, Mr. Zungu is a prominent uh, investor in uh, South Africa and Africa, I believe. But if we uh, take it, uh, bring it home to your home, um, Durban and the Etekwini municipality, you run several investments there, one of which being the um, meetings and conference and wedding venues industry. And uh, therefore, this is you speaking as an insider in the space. So what do you think about uh, how the Etikuni municipality is positioning uh, itself right now as an investment ground? And what would you add to their pitch? Well, thank you so much, um, Fifi. And uh, good afternoon and good morning to those across the shores. Um, I, I think it's, a, it's an excellent initiative, uh, this, um, you know, Call it uh, the, the pre-conference discussion. Uh, was it six to to align our thinking? Uh, maybe if I if I was to start by saying, um, what are the ingredients that are required for a Teguini to sustainably position position itself as the right uh, investment destination for foreign direct investment from the states and elsewhere, but also for investment from within was well, there's quite a, a, an impressive pool of capital which is waiting for a home. Mm. Um, when we see a Tewini uh, acting with um, a sense of uh, great purpose, when we see a Tewini municipality, uh, uh, starting with the mayor, uh, Honorable um, Kaunda, and, um, and the, 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 the city manager, Musambele, uh, demonstrating um, a sense of a uh, single-minded um, determination to, to drive certain programs forward, to ensure that Etiwini has a, a, a good slice of um, that investment prospect, uh, we derive a lot of encouragement. 
because that's that's the first and foremost um, what is required, which are really soft issues, but probably more important issues. Uh, the ocean is there; uh, it won't go away. It's a it's it's a beautiful part of um, you know uh, the ocean um, that South Africa has um, across Devon. Um, the infrastructure is there; it's been developed over decades, and it's, in my opinion, world class infrastructure. Whether it's roads. Uh, whether it's uh, sewage, water infrastructure. Of course, uh, more needs to be done um, to upgrade and maintain that infrastructure because like everything built by humans, it needs to be maintained. If you don't maintain it, it withers. And uh, to try and get back to the maintenance path may cost a lot more than um, you would have spent if you just scheduled maintenance on an ongoing basis. So um, I'm, I'm saying Etewin is beginning to tick the boxes uh, that I believe are critical um, ingredients or, or basic, uh, um, basic necessities to inspire the confidence of uh, would-be investors. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, there's no question about it that uh, Etewin has um, the, 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 the social infrastructure um, great humans, uh, including diversity of cultures, um, and and uh, in the mix of all of that, are very strong cultures, uh, which tend to uh, become representatives of what Africa has to offer the world. Uh, the Zulu culture, which is dominantly premised and uh, with the from around Tewini, is something that. Um, Africans want to showcase to the world, whether they are people of uh, Zulu origin or not. Uh, the Hindi culture, which is very strong in, in, in Durban, is something that can be showcased to the world, um, Ketis of Etewini. So there are many ingredients. Um, add to that the single-minded determination of the leadership. Um, you know, Despite the obstacles that will come their way from time to time, um, you have 50% of the work done. Um, now, when you have, uh, you know, Africans in diaspora, what um, you know, the, my friend Dennis refers to as, as Black people in the United States, uh, taking leadership like we are seeing now in ensuring that um, uh, the, the investment in Etewini is a kind of narrative that also finds, um, you know, uh, expression in the airwaves. And then it, it basically says we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, as as a player in the, the tourism sector, mm -hmm. um, the one besides just the the wedding destinations, uh, the, the venue which is mainly in the Midlands outside of uh, Tewini. Uh, I'll call it in the, in the outskirts of Etewini. Mm -hmm. uh, I can talk about that, but the one that I would like to talk about immediately is the one that talks about sports tourism, mm -hmm. which is uh, mm -hmm. um, arguably, um, not even arguably, it is the, the oldest uh, team in the in the uh, the in the national soccer league, uh, Amazon Football Club, which I own, which I lead. Um, and um, when we talk about sports tourism, mm. uh, Etewini is a leader. Mm. Uh, when Amaz, when uh, Orlando Paris comes to play in Etewini, uh, they get better support mm. week in, week out than they will get even in Orlando Stadium. Mm. When Kaza Chiefs takes its games to Etewini, um, they get a lot of support uh, than they will get in FNB Stadium. Mm. Uh, when they play against Amazon, uh, it will naturally be a, a, a sell-out affair. Um, what I'm basically saying is that, again, another ingredient exists, mm -hmm. that the people of Etewini, the people of Bozo Natal, are very passionate about sports. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have um, sports tourism and even sports investment being an, an investment class that is beginning to as assume dominance. Mm -hmm. um, again, yet another box, yet another beautiful ingredient to position Etewini as that uh, wonderful destination for investment from outside as well as from within. Okay. 
And uh, you are allowed to be biased about uh, the uh, football team that you own and the kind of uh, crowds that it pulls when it plays, uh, notwithstanding the competitor, so because it's, it's, it's your football team. But if we uh, just to maybe put a more um, um, a less biased lens on this and we uh, talk about the opportunity of sports tourism and uh, we talk about the opportunity also of uh, destination tourism, weddings, events, conferencing and all of that. Uh, you have uh, certainly presented a very uh, positive picture of the leadership of a Teguini municipality and the things they're getting right. So you spoke about the number of boxes that they were uh, ticking and you also spoke about the ingredients perhaps that were making it on the uh, list of the economic pie, the sumptuous pie that they are trying to ultimately bake. Any missing ingredients that perhaps need to uh, be expedited in terms of attention, uh, Mr. Zungu, if, if there was just maybe one or two things you reckon that the uh, municipality could do faster, uh, right now or better, right now, what would it be? Uh, it, it's very, it's very difficult. Was the intention is not to 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 um, do a, a pot shot attack um, uh, on the the city governance side, um, especially in the context of a global audience that we have. Um, it suffices. It suffices to say that um, when it when it comes to 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 sports tourism, um, I can talk about another beautiful box, the weather. Um, that's why Etewini becomes uh, the number one destination for sports uh, in winter. Uh, whether you talk about the 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 the, the Devon July, uh, the horse racing event, uh, even when you talk about friendly matches uh, off season. Uh, because the weather is extremely permitting, it's not extreme cold winter weather. Um, the humidity is, is very low. It's beautiful. Um, and therefore, even when you want to bring um, events uh, from offshore mm -hmm. um, into the African, uh, African soils, um, winter time, uh, Devon is the right place to, to, to have. Now, the question for me uh, would be, the issue of social cohesion. Mm. Um, it is as much a responsibility of the city as it is a responsibility of civil society. How do we ensure that um, the people of the city are aligned with the thinking of business, the thinking of um, the city management and leadership, um, to ensure that they see a bigger picture, uh, not just for the short-term gains, but for the long-term? When we consistently invest in attracting um, sports tourism investment, um, it may it may actually cause alarm mm -hmm. in societies. How can you spend hundred million runs um, attracting a certain event um, when we've got uh, informal settlements um, booming mm -hmm. all around the city? Um, then you actually get forced to reprioritize on things that, uh, um, you know, subject us to, a, a, or rather keep us on a, a feeder lane in terms of a, an investment and long-term lane. So the, the need for a city leadership that is able to galvanize um, society to a, a vision that is shared mm -hmm. um, so that it, it becomes easier to say we're going to invest so much money uh, the returns will not be immediate. But if we consistently invest in this, um, the, the next generation uh, will, will see the fruits and they will sustain the fruits and will see uh, why the leadership of today will have been ahead of its time or will have been uh, forward looking. So in my view, if there was ever any criticism I need to level at the leadership right now is uh, please show us your energy. Please show us um, your single-mindedness in terms of mobilizing society to be aligned with the vision that you have that business supports. Okay. No, thank you so much for uh, providing uh, that uh, balance and your point duly noted uh, just regarding how we are presenting the continent to the rest of the world. Uh, quite often Africa is... Um, criticized for uh, not putting its best foot forward enough 
and uh, to the points that you have raised. There is uh, quite a lot of positive things and attractive things going for this continent and going for the Etiquini municipality specifically. So bringing it back home just uh, in terms of the focus on the oceans economy and the blue economy, we have heard a bit about what is happening with the um, marine development, the multi-million uh, rand expansion, the multi-billion rand expansion, uh, correct myself, that is happening there. We heard uh, also uh, from Mr. Mbela about uh, some of the opportunities of exploring uh, water taxi uh, public transportation, something that I'm uh, certainly interested in. We've heard about the prospects of uh, sports tourism again in this uh, conversation as well as the mice industry. And now to hear a little bit about the ports. And uh, so I would like you to lead us in here, Mr. Uh, Motohi, uh, Durban, uh, home to one of the busiest ports in Africa. Uh, if you can just let us know from a transnet and a ports uh, perspective uh, what you are, are doing, uh, what kind of initiatives are currently on the go right now uh, to uh, strengthen the ocean economy. Greetings, everyone. I just want to be correct and not confuse the evening and the morning. Uh, from the transit point of view, we really are partners with the city and the business, as it has been mentioned by the mayor, city manager, and uh, Mr. Zungu. What we've done when it comes to the port of Deben, we conceived what we called the Deben Port Master Plan. This master plan is meant to revitalize the port of Deben, reposition it to regain its lost shrine that over time has waned, as Mr. Zoom was saying. If uh, maintenance is not done, at times the infrastructure tends to wane. In, it, in as far as this topic is concerned, we are working well with the city on the marina development, uh, where Transnet and the city have joined hands together to say this is an area where we really need to create a pretty face of the port, because the port is seen as a hardcore industrial sector. However, when it comes to the marina development, we're working together and we want to have this to be a modern African uh, setting that is looking forward. Coming to the issue of tourism, we have recently given a concession to a privately run uh, passenger, tem uh, uh, passenger terminal, which was opened about two years ago, Nelson Mandela Cruz Terminal. This is the biggest we have in the country. Uh, it handles most passengers uh, per uh, uh, season. What we've seen this year, which is a silver lining of the black cloud that has hit the Suez Canal, for the first time in history, we've seen the MSC World Tour cruise liner coming to the South African shores. Mm -hmm. This then, I think uh, the Reverend would be pleased to say this has created an opportunity for the African people in America who really want to be on the leisure travel mm -hmm. to use that opportunity of uh, either participating in that or setting their own that will come to Devon. Because once you hit Devon, you really are within uh, three hours of many major attractions uh, in as far as tourism is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we've got world-class facility here that can handle them. And where it excites us mostly is that for those people who would be coming from those ships that are coming on leisure, every penny that is being spent really is the money into the economy. They buy here and leave money into this economy, and we say they should come to Devon because they will find that for a world-class outfit that is being run there. Secondly, we also have, as part of this uh, revitalizing of the port of Devon, looked at the ship repair. I know there are people in the USA who are interested probably in the industrial sector. Mm -hmm. Here we say we want to attract the biggest ships to come to Devon. Why do you want to do this? If we had forgotten, South Africa is in the middle between the Far East and the Americas. With all the turmoil that is happening along the Suez Canal, this route again has become popular and safe. And we then say the port of Devon should be positioned as the hub port that is going to be a point where east meets west. Some cargo from east can be uh, discharged in the port of Devon, and you have ships taking the same cargo to the west, which would include Americas. And if we do this, we feel that we are going to be creating more economic activities for the Devonites and also begin to reposition our port as the modern port now. Those big ships that will be doing this cross transfer of cargo will require to be repaired at some stage. That is why we also are going out to market to call for people who want to invest in building a new 
ship repair facility, which will be much longer and wider than the current one. And we believe we have got a market and the investors should really be considering this opportunity where they can run this and bring much needed jobs and also to come and re-industrialize our economy and bring skills. We also are looking at introducing quite a number of new terminal operations and we're looking at new entrances in many instances. But as we do this, we really want to state that our interest is to say when foreign investors are coming, they should be looking at uh, also partnering with locals so that there is that cross uh, transfer of skills, partnership, and also cross learning from both parties. And they will have an opportunity of setting up modern facilities that are going to position us as the most efficient, uh, least costly operation, which will modernize the port of Teben. We're not only confining ourselves on the terminal operation, we know that that space has got its own value chain from packaging to transportation to clearing and forwarding, marketing, and we look at all those opportunities. At the port level, we also have reached out to the port of New York and other ports in the USA where we are busy entering into a sister port agreement where we want to firm up this partnership so that it is enabling us to have people that can sell our capability without us being in the USA and will do likewise here, which will help us to be quick to reach the market at low cost. We also are working with the authorities uh, that will be other departments that will help us to enhance the product offering of the port in as far as the agriculture is concerned. Sure. The port of Devon is not only servicing the port of Devon, but we've got hinterland where the provinces such as Limpopo, Free State, Mpumalanga, Northwest are dependent on this port when it comes to agricultural products. So we've got well-developed infrastructure that keeps our fruit in a good condition for it to reach the international shelves. Okay. We also are supporting the industrial sector, auto, Devon being the biggest uh, facility in the country that handles automotives. And we're looking at increasing that from 600,000 units to just under a million uh, units per annum. So there's a lot we're doing. Containers, we're increasing it from 2.9 million TUs to around 11 million TUs. We also want to look at the cluster that handles uh, petrochemicals. We are looking at setting up facilities that are going to be following trends. As we know that the fossil fuel is exiting the market, but there are new alternatives coming in. And we want to call on investors that will be setting up these modern uh, facilities that are going to be aligned with the vision of uh, an environment-friendly operation and also modernizing and putting South Africa where it has to be. And we really do not want to be say, a set to be looking more like New York. We have to match it pound for pound when it comes to aesthetic and features of uh, the facilities. So we really are excited about this conversation because we are calling on people to come and invest because we know not all of this money will come from our own balance sheet. Some of it will be coming from the investors that are coming in here. And we say Devon is a safe investment. And it's got, uh, I want to state here, the mayor, city managers are here. They are the most agile municipalities that I've, I've, I've experienced. A year ago, I like, we I like the uh, quantification uh, regarding uh, your uh, experience, but of course, it's uh, ultimately allowed for you to uh, voice your opinion. Uh, so I'm going to have to leave it there uh, just uh, because there's uh, still so much more that we have to say, but uh, time is uh, running against us. Uh, suffice to say that I would like to just ask Mr. Mbele just to give us a brief um, uh, a comment just regarding all the opportunities that we have heard, particularly what Transnet is talking about with the inviting foreign partners to partner a certain level of the ports, uh, also uh, emphasizing the importance of foreign partners partnering with local companies to ensure that the growth is inclusive. 
at the heart of everything right now, uh, so is uh, ESG, it's environmental, social and governance concerns. Perhaps more environmental concerns and even governance concerns for the uh, uh, KZN province, the Etiquini municipality, just given uh, the uh, increase of climate related events that uh, your uh, city and the municipality has been hit with. So if you can just briefly uh, help us understand how you are thinking about uh, inviting all these investment opportunities that do come on your table and make making sure that you balance them with an ESG and a sustainability lens. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, one of our biggest advantages was that about 20, 25 years ago, we started investing um, in the research on issues of climate change. Uh, one of the leading uh, climate change scientists uh, Professor Deborah Roberts was an employee of the city for nearly 30 years. And one of the programs that they came up with are now beginning to help the city to become more resilient in the face of these uh, uh, climate change induced uh, disasters. Um, uh, they developed, and which has since become part of the inner city uh, regeneration strategy, but it covers the length and breadth of, 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 of the metropolitan area. They came up with what was called a DEMOS. DEMOS is an abbreviation for Deben Metropolitan Open Space System. We have actively invested <clears throat> in the green belt and protecting uh, uh, sensitive environmental uh, and, and biodiversity assets across the city. Um, and we have been buying properties that we believe are strategically located and have uh, ecosystem value. And that has really helped us, particularly in the face of the floods. And we have started early as part of our climate change strategy to begin to invest in uh, technologies, uh, particularly when it comes to infrastructure development, uh, to ensure that uh, when we have just faced a a climatic uh, um, uh, event that has led to a disaster. When we uh, rebuild our infrastructure, we do what we term building back uh, better. <clears throat> so we want to assure investors across the globe that yes, we are a city on the eastern seaboard of uh, of uh, of South Africa. We are exposed to um, uh, climate. If, uh, disasters, but the way we are developing our infrastructure, we are doing it in such a way that we safeguard assets um, of our investors when they come uh, to this city. This is still at work. Um, it will uh, begin to show some, some good results in the next three uh, to five years already because we have experienced three successive climate uh, change induced uh, disasters. So yes, we do have the problem of being exposed to, to flooding like any other uh, coastal city, but how we are delivering infrastructure, we are building back a better as I said. On the social front, we, we are a post-apartheid city and we know that uh, uh, we have experienced a wave of uh, in-migration towards major urban centers, and Devon is no different from that. Um, what we are what we are doing is to provide housing opportunities in an inclusive uh, fashion. Uh, Mr. Zungu has spoken about issues of informal settlements that are on the increase, but we are seeking to ensure that we provide shelter for our people and we provide social development programs uh, to ensure social cohesion, to deal with issues of crime, to deal with issues of um, uh, extreme uh, poverty, which we still do experience in some quarters of our city, but in pursuit of a noble project of, uh, of, uh, of a social inclusion. These are all programs that we have in our kitty. Um, and of so course, it's not, it's not unique to uh, Durban. It's not unique to Durban. It is seen all over the world where we have seen a, a number of people uh, flooding 
uh, towards the city in, sh in seeking uh, economic opportunity and access. But it uh, dials back to what the mayor did to say about the concrete uh, effort that the uh, municipality is thinking about in terms of providing the access and the opportunities to the more uh, rural and urban areas just to uh, try and uh, uh, mitigate some of the effects of migration that is happening a lot faster than the infrastructure that is required to house the people that are coming to the city. May, um, Mr. Mela, sorry to cut you off there. Uh, as I said, uh, quite a tight program and still a lot more to uh, get through. And unfortunately, this is where we're going to have to close this uh, panel discussion, the first part of the panel discussion. But I'd like to thank you all uh, for uh, sharing your insights. Uh, Mr. Musambel, of course, City Manager at Teguini Municipality. Mr. Sandile Zungu, Chairman at Zungu Investments, uh, Moshe Motohi, uh, Managing Executive of the Eastern Region for Transnet uh, National Port Authority, as well as Reverend Dennis Dillon, uh, who's coming through, uh, the convener of the Resurgence Conference. He's coming through, bringing uh, quite a number of delegates uh, from the U.S., and uh, we look forward to uh, perhaps engaging with you guys when you are here. Uh, let's get some feedback uh, right now, uh, just to the uh, contributions that have been shared so far in the past hour. And I'd like to begin with Mr. Edmund Mshonga. He's the founder and director of Guamashu Community Advancement uh, Projects. Uh, sir, uh, what do you think? Just your thoughts and other considerations, perhaps, that need to be uh, put on the table. Is it a, a good a good evening or a good afternoon? It's all of them, all of the above. <laughs> it it is both. <laughs> it is all of the above, but we just wanted to get your uh, contributions, Mr. Mthonga, just uh, in terms of what you have heard and uh, what you think uh, should uh, be um, emphasised, particularly when we talk about um, resurgence and uh, inner city uh, development from a community perspective, if you could just uh, help us understand what we should consider. Well, um, thank, thanks for the opportunity and for the great uh, speakers and discussion. I, I think what is uh, is critical, especially for a, a Deben and a Teben municipality, uh, is a, a cultural and creative industry for this, uh, which we currently don't have. Uh, because th that will guide uh, in terms of uh, the investment uh, leading to cultural tourism. Because there are a lot of opportunities, but there is no uh, coordinated strategy when it comes to that because of the lack of the policy. Once you get that policy, then you can develop a strategy. Then you can uh, 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 budget about it and then uh, exploit the opportunities. So there is one element. As such, then you see, especially when it comes to the townships, there are piecemeal opportunities uh, or initiatives that are done there, which are, are not yet coordinated. And the, imagine if those are coordinated, uh, uh, how they can take the, the city and the town municipality into. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities that can be exploited. Uh, I'm happy we're talking about the uh, New York uh, my take is that when you go to New York, there are products that are representing the, the nature of the city of New York. You can buy a T-shirt. I love New York. Everyone, when it goes to New York, want to buy that particular T-shirt. And a lot of other items uh, that you can buy that are related to the stage of liberty. But when you come to a Teguini, uh, what, what can you buy? If you come from overseas, what, what, what identity? that uh, uh, we have uh, when it comes to it again. We've got Moses Mabita precinct, which is a beautiful one. Why can't we develop something like uh, I love New York, but they talk to what you can find uniquely at a, a, a city of Devon. Devon is a city of African literature by UN. We're not exploiting that. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities that can come in terms of books, publishing, theater, there's a lot. Okay. We've got uh, 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 the other point is exploiting the opportunities of twin city sisters. We've got a twin city sister agreement with, especially I'll, I'll mention uh, Chicago, uh, New Orleans, LA. Those are, 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 are critical key ones. When you talk uh, LA, we talk Hollywood. When you talk New Orleans, we talk music and film. 
Chicago. That's where Hollywood started with the Columbia. And th those are twin sister uh, uh, agreements with Deben, but we, we're not exporting that. And they also have got the ports. Uh, you, you've got the leads in the UK, you've got Bremen in Germany. So imagine those opportunities if they are coordinated, especially linking with the, the arts and culture policy and cultural tourism and ocean uh, economy that we have. We, we, we've got the best uh, craft in this province. We've got the best ports uh, in Devon, mm -hmm. but there's no coordinated strategy of exporting our best craft to market our city and our country. And for me, are, uh, that is important. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a, just a, such fantastic feedback. Essentially, what you're talking about is what we already have and how we uh, can strengthen what we already have from a collaboration point of view and an offering point of view to uh, better leverage uh, the uh, tourism opportunity in the city of Durban, the Etiquini municipality. So thanks so much for that. Sorry to cut you short. As I said, uh, quite a number of speakers still to get through. But uh, we're also joined by Google Damini. Uh, she's the managing director and uh, she's the founder of Bethel Farm and Estate. And Google, I invite you now to uh, give your opportunity, perhaps uh, your contribution, perhaps maybe speaking from the agritourism space in which you operate. Um, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, thank you for your facilitation, Fifi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning uh, to our colleagues in New York. Um, so for me, I think that, um, you know, when we're talking about investments, we have been talking about investments for years, and yet uh, all of us are aware as the previous speaker has just spoken, that um, we need to find a way of plugging in your people that have been excluded from the economy. Um, and we need to make that um, easier for people to enter into sectors um, that can give them the greatest opportunity. So. Um, I know this is going to sound biased because I'm in farming, <laughs> but I really do believe that farming has got the ability um, to bring in your very low end uh, people to be part of the economy because of the different ways in which farming can be done. And now with the increase in technological advancement, um, there's a lot that can be achieved through uh, protected farming. There are a lot of innovative ideas that are coming in, uh, some originally coming from uh, countries as far as um, Israel with the technologies of how we can do farming uh, undercover instead of being exposed to, um, to you know, open field and with all the climate change challenges that we have had, um, obviously that would be a, a, a critical move. But, you know, the reason agriculture is a good investment, in my view, is that it meets a number of um, interesting things that we are dealing with as a country. So the first would be we have a big challenge uh, um, of food security in South Africa. And if we are investing a lot into our peripheral parts of Durban, in, in, in particular our emerging farmers, um, what we've done um, in the, because we are based in the Herrick Waller district, we've plugged in emerging farmers that don't have access to markets to our farm because it's slightly bigger so that they can on supply with us. And what we have seen is we have seen poverty basically diminish overnight, literally, when people did not have any way of getting um, income stream into their home because nobody is going to take them seriously because some of them have got small plots. But we are now doing a national um, initiative um, and KZN is obviously going to be included in that way. We are targeting, this would be a nice initiative for Durban to get involved in as well because there are a lot of emerging uh, farmers in Durban where we are targeting about a million emerging um, farmers in South Africa, because that's the number that we have, to give them access to market, which is their biggest struggle. And because they can deal with a number of challenges that we're facing socially and economically, I think it's a, it's a sector that has really been undersold.
Um, we also have aquaponics in agriculture where you farm fish, you know. That's another industry that is growing in South Africa. We don't have a significant uh, um, outlay of that kind of infrastructure yet. But when you go to areas like PE, there are a few of those farmers that are already getting to this kind of technology. Um, the other great opportunity that agri agriculture does provide for us is job creation. You know, um, one of the things that we have seen is how quickly it is for us to use our young uh, people in the different value chains from, you know, purchasing seedlings right up to actually delivery and uh, going into service in uh, restaurants. So when you get into agriculture, there's a wide um, field that uh, young people can be plugged in. So again, there we've started a youth agri initiative, also a national initiative that we hope Durban is also going to be participating in. And basically what it is, is that we give young people an opportunity to work on farms and then choose a pathway sure. that is going to position them either to farm for themselves, we give them one hectare of land, and then they look after that. And over a period of about 12 months, you know, uh, those young people are running a 1 million rand turnover operation. Sure. And that does get people out of poverty. It does link them already with our off-tech agreements, and then it plugs them into the commercial space. Okay. So I think really there is a huge opportunity there. And of course, our farming and agriculture is also entering into the space of agritourism, where uh, a lot of people that are not exposed to what is going on in our farms, our young children growing up, not knowing uh, where they get their milk from. <laughs> it's exciting to see that agritourism is, is also growing. Um, and it's an under-invested um, uh, sector that I think uh, creates a great opportunity. Google, so I'm going to jump in. Yeah, thanks. And uh, um, insightful comment around uh, the lack of knowledge of where the milk does come from. Uh, apologies to cut you off short, and especially when you are uh, presenting and um, informing us of uh, quite a number of uh, sectors within the agri-space uh, that are ripe for investments right now. To yourself and Edmund, essentially well, uh, lightening up. Uh, the uh, further investment opportunities, of course, that Etiquini municipality can leverage. Edmund talking about cultural and creative economies, as yourself talking about um, the agriculture, the entire value system in which uh, opportunity is abound, not only from a growth perspective, but also from investments. And I think that it's valuable feedback for the Etiquini municipality to take on to see how uh, they can partner more with uh, players such as yourselves to do a lot more than you are currently doing. Uh, Mr. Edmund Mklongo, who's the founder and director of Guamashu Community Advancements uh, Projects, as well as Ms. Gugu Lamini, uh, Bethel Farm and Estate Managing Director and Founder. Uh, thanks so much to the both of you for your uh, contribution. So we're moving on swiftly to the second uh, panel discussion. And it is on a topic that has been highlighted by previous speakers, touched on just a bit, but we're going to dig deeper into the sector, the sector of property and infrastructure development specifically. My guests... Joining me for this uh, conversation are um, Tembo Ntuli, who is the chairperson of the Economic Development and Planning Committee for the Etegwini Municipality. We have uh, Vivian Reddy also on the uh, call, chairperson of Edison Power Group, Lihle Pewa, deputy city manager for economic development and planning. Uh, also for the Etegwini Municipality, we've got uh, Walter Mosley, the uh, former New York uh, State Representative and Senior Business Advisor, the Honorable Wayne uh, Smith, who's a business and investment consultant and uh, former mayor of Irvington, New Jersey. And I'm welcoming back uh, Reverend Dennis Dylon, the co-convener of Resurgence uh, conference. Uh, so it's so quite a, a fully packed panel there. And a good afternoon, uh, good morning, and a good evening to all of you. I'll save uh, you from all of that uh, protocol. I guess it's just an understanding of uh, the uh, kind of opportunities that are presently on the table and that we want the international audience and the investment audience to hear right now. And uh, perhaps, uh, Councillor Nduli, if I can ask you to open up the discussion for us, just to speak specifically about the uh, projects uh, in the space, in property and infrastructure development that you have uh, on the table to support uh, the uh, growth of Durban and uh, the Eta Green Municipality.
Uh, thank you. Greeting to you and the members of the panelists. Uh, one, I've got a few things that you want to raise before we proceed. Firstly, the municipality has formalized engagement with the private sector and developers uh, by establishing Catholic projects. Uh, <clears throat> The, the, the intention of that uh, is to make it a point that we have got a centralized system to help everybody that want to come and uh, invest in Deben. Wow. More than that, on assisting on a few things that the developer need to do before uh, starting on <clears throat> doing the development. Most of the time, there are things that make things delay. Uh, we do have got a process that deal with the issue of first uh, making the um, issue of Pluma and other plan approvals to move quickly. As we know that there are so many departments that we have within the municipality. Okay. Do you know who I do see? I see a gentleman that I am familiar uh, with, uh, Mr. Reddy. Um, of course, a, a gentleman who uh, has headlined in the uh, local papers recently. Uh, just uh, given the uh, huge investment that he made in the property sector in um, Durban uh, at a time where it was not uh, cool or profitable to do so. I'm talking about uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Reddy, you pushed on with the development of your mall and alas, uh, we are now able to enjoy some of the offerings and the spoils that you have brought, uh, world-class offerings at that. Just what do you think about the infrastructure and property development opportunity that still remains in the city, sir? Well, uh, it's great to be talking to you again, Fifi. You're a real breath of fresh air. And, um, no, it's been great uh, talking to everyone. I mean, we've just uh, invested $220 million uh, in Amslanga Rocks. And uh, to our international dignities in Amslanga Rocks is one of the uh, tourist destinations in Durban, in the city of KwaZulu-Natal. And it can be equated to Miami. Uh, it can be equated to some of the best waterfronts in the world. And this place has become world-class because of the investment of the city. They've created a great waterfront, uh, they, a great walkway. And, um, you know, in one of the experiences I've got to give you, we built a Radisson Blue Hotel, the first Radisson Blue in uh, the city of Durban. Uh, we brought a, a mall with international brands like Gucci and Dolce Cabana and Versace and various international brands and asking them, to come and invest in the city of Durban, I thought would be a very difficult uh, task. But when the CEOs of these companies uh, visited the city of Durban, they were absolutely taken aback. I remember a CEO of one of the biggest international brands telling me that Durban is the best, cost, best kept secret in the world. I mean, they haven't been there. And maybe that's a message to uh, Lishle, who's just been appointed. Uh, I believe we must congratulate him. It's a great appointment and he, as Deputy City Manager, Economic Development and Tourism, uh, that we need to market Devon more. Mm -hmm. But having these international brands come up and spend tens of millions of dollars uh, in the city, uh, the first thing they said, is the city well run? Is the city well managed? And that was a tick. We got a great management of the city, a great city manager, a good mayor. And um, they were quite satisfied. In fact, uh, the mayor and the uh, city manager had the opportunity of meeting Mr. Dolce of Dolce Cabana themselves, you know, <laughs> and, and they had an absolutely great uh, uh, interaction. And with the result, uh, Dolce Cabana is going to be investing more at the oceans more. And um, in building this mall, you know, the hotel industry is so vibrant in the city of Durban. We need lots of hotels. We need more international brands in the city of Durban. You know, you've got the Hilton Gardens, you've got the Radisson Blue, and the international brand, that's all. We believe more international brands can attract bigger tourism uh, to the city of Durban, and we see it. The Radisson Blue, uh, at the moment has become one of the best performing hotels in the city of Devon. Mm -hmm. And the city itself plays a great role in us as investors, as property investors. You know, they contributed greatly to the uh, roads around um, Slanga Rocks. They widened the roads. And it was great having that interaction and getting the plans approved. And, uh, and I think 
one of the things we as investors, you know, our capital can go anywhere. Mm. And I'm investing big way and we continue investing more. We're just building another 250 apartments and we're putting a Radisson Red Hotel in, in Amslanga Rocks. Mm. It is because we are very, very confident. We've got access to the leadership of the city. We could talk to them about the problems uh, and they open doors for developers. And if you look at what's happening and, you know, I know a lot of people that are investing billions of uh, brands and hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in the city. And it's largely because of the good economic state of the city uh, and the infrastructure you know, we do have the challenges, and but it has been fixed, a lot of them being fixed. And what is good, and we as investors like the attitude of the mayor and the city manager where they are absolutely honest about the problems. Mm. They're interacting. I mean, there's just a new budget put out where there's a possible increase of rates and tariffs. And the mayor is interacting with the business community to hear the views. And that's what we need. We need our views for you. And if we feel that we want it and our capital is wanted, we will invest. And Durban, sure. I think, you know, especially to our uh, uh, U.S. Uh, guests, is that when people come to Durban and they see the potential in the city, and besides the um, beachfront area, even on the inner city, there could be great strides made. We've got Beautiful buildings can become heritage buildings, can be converted into residentials. We've got the um, a major land in Devon that can be developed. And, and I believe there's a lot being done. And I'm very, very excited uh, to continue investing in this place. And, uh, you know, we encourage our guests from the U.S. We look forward to the delegation coming to Devon. And one of the things that's also happening in Devon, we're getting more international flights uh, to Devon. And, you know, we have some private clubs. There's a place called the Pencil Club in Devon. And when I took these international investors, like the CEO of Gucci and Versace <laughs> up there, and when we went up there and we saw the most beautiful city anywhere, it could be anywhere in the world, it could stand up. And, I mean, I remember one of the uh, international CEOs, he compared uh, uh, Durban, uh, you know, he, co he compared it to uh, a second. He said, look, it's starting to look like Dubai. And that's what's happening to our sure. <clears throat> shoreline and the place. So we continue and we believe Devon is an exciting place to be investing at the moment. Just a quick one. And uh, it is uh, great that, I mean, we are being uh, likened, uh, the Durban is being likened to um, uh, international cities. And I see the strategy that uh, you are employing in terms of bringing brands uh, that a lot of international travelers are familiar with and essentially creating a home away from home. But we did have a contribution around the local offering and what are we doing to position the local offering such that when those international travelers go back, it's not just a Gucci or Versace or something that they can get uh, from their own homes that they're going back with. It's something unique to Durban, akin to a I Love New York t-shirt or a Statue of Liberty t-shirt. What do you reckon about that, uh, um, Vivian, and the opportunity for uh, local um, brands and offerings within your portfolio of investments? Yeah, in fact, uh, if you look at what's being done at Amslangerox, and I use Amslangerox because it's the number one destination in Durban, um, along the street, the city and ourselves are co-erecting a whole lot of stores for local traders where you can get uh, local crafts, arts, uh, local beads, uh, uh, animal skin, uh, you know, uh, artwork. Uh, and we're actually creating uh, this employment and opportunity. And even within the mall, we have restaurants uh, that have local cuisine. Uh, we have smaller stalls. Uh, we actually one of the first malls that got stalls that cater for Zulu uh, cultural outfits and Corsa cultural outfits. So when the visitors come out here, they can take a whole lot of tourism stuff back, like ostrich eggs and artwork of Mandela. And, and all these things have been created no more. And these tenants actually play a lesser rental. Uh, we're actually empowering small emerging uh, tenants. Uh, and I think when, um, you know, when we look at... Uh, the city of uh, Durban, and we look at South Africa, the issue of BE is always very, very important, this black economic empowerment. 
And in our mall at Oceans, the first mall in South Africa, where 70% of our tenants are black South Africans. Sure. And uh, we made sure that happens. Uh, and we just hope if more of that happens, it gives better opportunities. But when tourists come into one of the unique things we have in our mall, we have a piazza uh, for supercars. And, you know, the reason why we bring supercars is absolutely unique. People that cannot afford a supercar would look at it, they'll take photographs, and they aspire. It becomes an inspirational item for them to go out and succeed so they can own these cars themselves. And, um, you know, we look at the um, Slanga Beach. There are lots of traders out there, and the city is encouraging the traders along the beachfront. When you walk along, our promenade is world class, and uh, that becomes a major, major a tourism uh, attraction also uh, along the Umslanga. And in Durban, we've got the thing like the rickshaw, which is unique to Durban. We've actually got great attractions. We've got Sabaya Casino, which has got an African cultural, Zulu cultural village. And um, there's absolutely great attractions. And when you come to Durban and why and people Kalini, love Durban, just two a, and a half a hour away, you've got to some great to increase the design. local offering. Uh, sorry to cut you there, Vivian. I was saying essentially you are doing a lot. I mean, there, perhaps there's a debate as to whether more can be done at this present moment in time, but you are uh, understanding the importance of uh, local tourism and presenting that to the international audience as well. Uh, Walter, uh, good morning to you, sir. I... Um, I trust you are there uh, because this next question is coming to you. Uh, essentially, Walter, we heard at the uh, top of this discussion from your senator about the uh, big bounty of investments that the, um, the city of New York uh, is uh, sitting on. It's, it's looking for a new home, not uh, only to be impactful, but also to, to generate returns because that's what investments need to do. Uh, maybe if you can just speak to us about uh, how as uh, the US you are looking at the opportunity of investing in uh, property and infrastructure in Durban and Etiquini uh, specifically. Oh, well, thank you uh, for this opportunity, uh, Ms. Peters. Um, and thank you, uh, Reverend Dillon, for inviting me. And uh, as you said, I used to be a member. Uh, Mr. Uh, Senator Sanders was a colleague of mine. I am now in uh, the international emerging market uh, in terms of business consulting. Uh, based here in the States, in New York in particular, but we do most of our work in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the Caribbean islands, as well as in South America. Uh, there's two businesses that I think are inextricably linked to one another uh, that was talked about in terms of coordinating strategies and policies. Uh, and for companies that are doing who are based in the States, but are looking to do business in Sub-Saharan Africa. Two of the companies that I'm involved with, one is is, is looking to do business uh, in the continent. One is doing business in the continent uh, based around uh, uh, re renewable green energy. Uh, we understand that $200 million, as was spoken about earlier today, is, is a lot of money individually. But when you're looking at the grander scope of things, $2 million is a very small drop in the bucket. Uh, when it comes to building out uh, 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 infrastructure, when it comes to uh, utilizing all uh, the resources that are available to that part of uh, the continent. Um, and we, uh, as a minority owner in this business, uh, we look to use biodegradable fuel, biodegradable hemp uh, at scale to, to build out um, on some of these projects. Uh, whether you're talking about building roadways, whether you're talking about building affordable housing, um, and also uh, understanding that there needs to be an a incorporated ESG model uh, based upon cooperative economics as it relates to our farmers and the like. On the flip side, there has to be an understanding that uh, how do we grow and how do we use bio-based fuels um, uh, in today's economy has to be inextricably linked to um, uh, how do we install uh, advanced uh, IT networks uh, based around artificial intelligence um, so that we're not being left behind while trying to remain sustainable. Sustainable, all it means is really to preserve what is present. We need to continue to uh, inter interlock the tools of yesterday's uh, business model to the tools that will allow us to formulate tomorrow's business models. So here in New York, for example, in our rural communities, which are face some of the similar uh, situations that we see in other uh, countries in the continent, um, we understand mm -hmm. that rural uh, communities cannot forge forward in an agricultural-based society unless they have the 
the technical tools uh, to uh, to meet scale, mm -hmm. to meet demands. And uh, we see that same model to be transferred over to places like Durban uh, and other countries in which we're operating in, understanding that it is not merely one just to grow uh, bio-based uh, uh, byproducts and use those uh, uh, renewable byproducts as as fuel and and, 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 and crete, uh, biocrete, but also to understand that um, to meet scale, to meet demands, um, we need to make sure that we integrate um, very advanced IT integrated uh, technological tools uh, to uh, to uh, you know be sustainable, but also to be on par with other growing cities that look to be destinations of international communities. Uh, and the like. So uh, to me, I think it's one thing to um, want these things and I think uh, to be on a scale of being a destination for tourism. But we also understand that that tourism is only going to be attracted to the uh, to this destination by the people who live there year round and how we uh, integrate them into the development uh, of this uh, project while at the same time making sure that they are integral and growing and in, 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 in terms of uh, generative sustainability models uh, so that they can benefit as well. So um, again, I wanna thank you for this opportunity and uh, I'm taking a lot of notes, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, coming to Durban uh, with the delegation uh, led by uh, Reverend Dillon. And um, again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as are we. And uh, perhaps uh, if you talk nice to Mr. Reddy, he can take you to the uh, same private club uh, that he took the uh, buses over at uh, Versace and uh, Gucci to witness, of course, the um, eye-watering scenery of the city of Durban. But, uh, Walter, your points are uh, actually also very poignant in terms of not uh, only focusing on international travel, uh, as uh, we do know that that can be seasonal, but ensuring that as we are talking about uh, tourism, the applying a holistic approach and creating an offering that uh, the people who actually live there can enjoy and the people who are there all year round. Hopefully we'll have time to come back to you for a, a follow-up, but I want to bring in your colleague as well, Mr. Smith. So just uh, your uh, take on what has been discussed uh, right now and the kind of opportunity or the attractiveness, how you assess the uh, Durban city right now for property and infrastructure. First, let me thank uh, Reverend Dillon, who's been a prophet for economic development in the black community in the U.S. and globally. So, um, and also the mayor for his presentation of his great city and the city manager for informing us of some of the things that are going on. So what I've heard today, a couple of things that have perked uh, my interest, and I want to go quickly to the tourism point. I had a conversation last night, and I believe he is uh, listening in with uh, one of my colleagues who I do business with, who's very engaged in the entertainment business. He's managed groups like Boys to Men, Vanessa Williams. And he said Durban was one of his tour sites when he used to go on tour with some of his artists. So, which, which means that to me, this whole conversation about promoting uh, Durban needs to be done. And uh, whether it is through earned media or paid media with the New York Christian Times, or the Positive Community Magazine, which is a client I represent, a Heart and Soul Magazine, which, which gets to that uh, billion dollar travel uh, um, that, that Reverend Dillon mentioned. We've got to market Durban. And I think his trip to Durban is going to play a big role. And that's why I'm delighted to have the opportunity to help him promote that. But um, I think we have an opportunity with what I've heard on the luxury front to bring entertainment and some of the top talent in the U.S. to Durban. But I also want to talk about how we even bring some of Durban's cultural artists into the U.S. Mm. Um, and so I think there's a business opportunity there that we can exploit on both of those fronts. And I look forward to working with uh, Reverend Dillon and all of you to see if we can exploit uh, some of that. The other thing is if there is a big move right now on the tourism front with the National Basketball Association expanding its outreach into Africa. And so if Durban is a city that is on the move, then maybe there's a need to begin to do the development stage of an NBA franchise as, as the NBA expands into Africa, because that's really going to be a major kick in uh, to your tourism. So we need to begin to maybe, Pastor Dylan, we can talk about maybe some of the stakeholders and Kwaji Alameen who's listening in 
how we may be able to talk about the possibility of bringing an NBA franchise to Durban. Um, I also see some possibilities with uh, investors on the real estate front. I think mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Dillon visited some real estate projects, and I'm sure he'll have more details to make available to many of our contacts around the region. I'm a Jersey guy, so we've heard from the New Yorkers, but I'm a Jersey guy. But I also, my, my company is very active in what they call the DMV, that's D.C., Virginia, and Maryland, which is really a, a, one of the higher income black communities in the United States. So I want to make sure that we carry that message into the region as well. Sure. Um, one of the things that uh, really impressed me about this presentation, and I don't think a lot of people realize, that Durban's ports are phenomenal. Mm. The uh, and, and, and so, you know, in Newark, New Jersey, we have a very active port. Mm. Uh, we just saw what happened with the bridge that's tying up the port in the Maryland area. So that may make, make even Durban's <clears throat> port more a valuable asset right now as people begin to look at alternative ways to move cargo. But I think um, all the mechanics are there. There's really some um, vast promotion that needs to take place so that people know a little bit more about Durban and the region of Equini. And uh, so I hope to help uh, Pastor Dillon uh, promote that opportunity. All right. Um, yeah, and uh, it uh, was also great uh, visiting New Jersey. I traveled on the, um, the, the is it the, the, the ship or the public transport um, ship between, yeah, there you go. There you go, between New York and New Jersey. You get there in 15 minutes. You get there in 15 minutes. <laughs> and it was exactly 15 minutes. It was raining on that particular day. It was during the floods, those unprecedented floods. But it was great nonetheless. So thanks so much for that. Uh, Reverend Dillon, we are going to come to you. In, in, Reverend Dennis, we're going to come to you in just a short while. I do understand that uh, we do uh, have uh, Councillor Nduli back uh, with us. And Councillor Nduli, we have been talking about a very enlightening enlightening opportunities. Uh, but of course, uh, with these opportunities come the critical comment and discussion around power. What can you uh, tell us about power security and some of the efforts that the uh, city of Durban has uh, been putting in place to ensure that it is something that is present for investments? Uh, Councillor, you are muted, sir. Yeah, I'm saying thank you. And my apology for what happened uh, last time. I think we had a problem a little bit on the network. The city has got a uh, got urban unit, which is in ATA, responsible for improving transport network to promote the public transport to the future generation. Uh, the information unit has created the integrated rapid public transport network which linked the major investment uh, node within the city. Pine Town, Kwamashu, uh, has been integrated to the, to the construction of Tumsan Makai Highway as one of the projects where the city has shown uh, its intention to improve uh, the network uh, road for road to promote public transport and spatial transformation in the city. We are still going to continue to other part of the city uh, to make it a point that put in all corners of the city, not only uh, the, the northern the, and the western part of it. Also to the central, we are still going to come for that. And also on the southern side. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful to have been able to hear you this time. Mr. Pewa, as well as yourself, uh, if we uh, just to give you the... Uh, platform and the opportunity as well, sir, to make your contribution. Thank you. Um, thanks for the question. Um, the city is driving a number of catalytic projects um, at the moment. Um, in fact, there are over 10 uh, such projects in our portfolio um, at the moment, uh, which are different stages of planning and implementation um, across the city. Uh, but now that we are discussing, you know, inner city in particular, um, we uh, are intending to develop a very strategic piece of land um, that is owned by the city. Um, and that development um, is called, you know, the Centrum um, um, Development, uh, where we are wanting to 
you know, promote uh, mixed use uh, you know, development. Um, coupled with that, we also have a strategically located you know, piece of land along the coast, um, um, just north of the um, 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 CBD um, called Virginia um, Airport. Uh, we also want to release that piece of land um, um, you know, to the market uh, for mixed use development, but targeting uh, you know, high-end uh, you know, residential opportunities uh, coupled with uh, you know, tourism um, um, and leisure um, elements. Um, so in as far as those two projects are concerned, um, uh, an expression of interest is currently uh, you know, running at the moment, um, which is going to close um, uh, beginning of uh, May and of April, um, and then we will proceed to uh, you know, evaluation um, around, around June. Um, so those present uh, you know, um, um, uh, strategic opportunities you know, um, in the city, uh, which will help uh, you know, um, uh, transform um, uh, you know, space um, you know, in, the, in the inner city. Over and above that, we are working with um, Transnet um, um, as well as Itala uh, you know, for the development of the you know, Deben Bay waterfront. Uh, you know, the conceptual framework you know, for that development uh, has already been approved. Um, um, so that's another you know, opportunity uh, you know, that would like you know, to be um, um, explored, um, 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 which is going to uh, you know, help the city become you know, more competitive uh, you know, in as far as our uh, you know, uh, tourism offering uh, you know, is concerned. Apart okay. from those, um, um, uh, the, 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 the Transnet has a port master plan. Um, and there's a number of um, uh, you know, projects uh, you know, um, arising from that uh, that have been earmarked uh, been as far as the redevelopment uh, you know, of the port um, is, is concerned. Um, so in summary, in as far as the inner city is concerned, uh, those will be the sum of the, you know, the opportunities that, um, um, that we have. Thank you. And uh, we certainly look forward to the announcements on the closing of those opportunities that you have presented, some of the 10 projects that you did highlight. We're going to finish off this uh, discussion, this particular legal dis the discussion, with the last word from Reverend uh, Dennis Dylan. Uh, sir, uh, just if we give you the last word, of course, just given the fact that you are bringing a large delegation to the city, your thoughts on the particular opportunity in property and infrastructure specifically? Well, thank you so much, Fifi, and I hope it's going to be large. Um, we're going to do our utmost best. The key is for everyone who's coming to really begin to uh, let us know now. Uh, I know many who have joined this call, not just from the U.S., but others that we've reached out to across the continent are really planning all to join us in Durban. A couple of things I want to say quickly. I want to go back to the point you made earlier. Um, such a key point, and that is uh, today in the United States of America, we are acknowledging uh, the fact that Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated on April 4th. And he was assassinated um, hours literally after he did what we call the mountaintop speech. And the mountaintop speech was the one uh, or one of the primary speeches where Dr. King was really talking about the need for Black America and obviously the Black world to begin to look at economic redemption, economic growth, economic empowerment. And it is so appropriate that on this day, that is the kind of conversation we're having is skits critical. I wanna just be prophetic, just based on all that I've heard and really see uh, Durban as rising to really become not only a travel hub, uh, interestingly enough, um, we've seen the creation of a travel hub way north of Africa in Dubai. Um, just imagine if Durban begin to look at the creation of a travel hub. So the, the folks in the Americas coming to Africa or traveling further east, they can do that. Uh, or, I mean, traveling further you know, east. Yeah, they can obviously do that by, 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 by first coming to Durban. I think the opportunities are there. We've talked about all of the things that are right 
uh, for that. Um, I've been to Durban many times. The stadiums are there. Uh, we talk about sports and the things of that nature. The International Conference Convention Center in Durban, I think uh, it is the largest and the best in all of the continent of Africa. So with all of these key components, and, and I see uh, the, 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 the development of the waterfront, um, and obviously there are many waterfronts, but, but these key waterfronts um, in Durban, I see a Miami beach, no doubt, even better, stronger, mightier. So part of that obviously comes through how we look at real estate development. And my recommendation to everybody that's doing development, including the investors that we're talking with and the business people we're talking with, is that we incorporate some key components in those developments. Number one, we want to make sure that we are, uh, you know, very focused on, on hotel rooms. I think that's an important part, very important space. We're looking at hospitality. I think that's also key and critical in any kind of mixed use development. And most certainly want to look at incorporating timeshare. Uh, some of the most successful um, smaller countries and economies and cities that, that we've worked with and gone to over the years, one of the key elements is just that. And again, we believe that that will attract a lot of uh, American consumers, not just business people now, but consumers who said, well, I own a timeshare in Durban. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that timeshare gets used all year round because obviously different ones are going to come and occupy. And sure. within the context of all these developments, um, so I'm literally seeing one development that has three or four components. Um, there's also the need for housing so that we're not gentrifying and pushing out uh, the Durbanites, if you will, but we're providing opportunities to ensure that they can also live. Um, again, I can give us one quick example. Uh, the, I'd, love the to Durban hear it. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> I'd love to hear the example, but I'm just looking at this uh, 10 minutes, or less than 10 minutes that we do have, uh, so, and quite a number of other speakers to hear from. But uh, essentially, I do love the synopsis that you have given regarding the holistic approach. You're talking about the hotel room, the host hospitality, timeshare. We have seen certain companies in the, the world making quite significant profits as a result of the timeshare opportunity, as well as housing domestically. We're going to hear from you a lot more, I'm sure, when you do land uh, in uh, South Africa's, on South Africa's shores in Durban specifically. But at this point, I would like to hit pause on that discussion and just invite other uh, speakers to give their contributions. Speakers, of course, who are speaking from the uh, point and the perspective of the uh, city of Durban. Uh, we heard his name being mentioned a little earlier. He's the KZN uh, chairman. Chairman for KZN Growth Coalition, of course, Mr. Moses Dembe. He is a businessman uh, who has a uh, done quite a number of projects, development projects, specifically in tourism and hospitality in the uh, city over the years. Mr. Tembe, um, a lot has been spoken. I can't even uh, believe that two hours has already gone by. Uh, but uh, what would you uh, have to add to what has already been presented, sir? Uh, thank you, Fifi. Uh, perhaps let me start by saying I'm humbled uh, by the invitation to participate in this esteemed uh, webinar to reflect on the big opportunity at Tewini's inner city regeneration business investment uh, opportunity. I also want to say uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, given uh, the fact that we no longer have much time, perhaps let me just go back to a few points uh, that have not been uh, mentioned or maybe accentuated some of the issues I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll kick off by saying uh, to you, um, I've never seen any uh, port and university city uh, around the world uh, that is not uh, prosperous. If you look at the strengths of uh, Tegwini, uh, I've always described it as a port and university city uh, that has endless uh, opportunities. So we truly have a huge uh, opportunity because of that port uh, and universities which are in the present uh, of Etewini. Uh, the, the 
the next point I want to accentuate is the uh, on the macro side is the geographic and location uh, of a Tewini. Uh, a Tewini being uh, close to the uh, uh, business hub of South Africa, how then uh, it, it really makes it a true gateway uh, for anyone to land in a Tewini and then move to other provinces. Uh, having a big port, uh, the biggest port in, 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 in the southern hemisphere, we are well positioned uh, from a, um, a, the integration of the economy in the sub Saharan, and they say a greater part of Africa, and, and many other opportunities that come with that uh, on the industrialization side. I also want to emphasize the importance of uh, a good weather uh, all around summer that uh, we have, and the proximity of a Tegwini to the Dragonsberg Mountains, the proximity of a Tegwini uh, to the game reserves. So when you're talking um, uh, tourism, when you're talking about uh, the beach that is warm, you can swim in our uh, sea uh, year all round, that uh, lends itself, uh, a, a, you know, as, as a catalyst. Whenever you're talking tourism, you couldn't ask for any assets better. We really think there are huge investment opportunities in that area. The last speaker spoke about a property development that always traces the sea, the water, uh, France, and so on. Uh, there are huge opportunities there. Remember that uh, uh, South Africa and uh, KZN in particular, and by extension Devon, it remains a, a, a virgin territory where you still have uh, land where you could develop. So we truly have uh, that seafront uh, number of properties that could be developed into a number uh, of uh, uh, tourist uh, uh, attractions. I want to also uh, answer a question uh, which was raised earlier uh, around um, uh, the provision of energy. Maybe as a backdrop uh, to that, uh, we must talk about the alignment of thought uh, between uh, business and, uh, and the private sector. In case of any particular, uh, and uh, by extension, Devon, we've got the growth and, and coalition which is more of a public-private uh, partnership uh, between government and, and business to facilitate catalytic uh, uh, projects likely to make a dent uh, in the uh, development of the, uh, of the province. And that is in place and going uh, quite well. So when it comes to that uh, a much needed relationship between government and business, it is quite in place uh, to ensure that uh, uh, public-private uh, partnerships uh, thrives. To that point, uh, I might as well advise that if you look at the recently uh, gazetted guidelines by the Treasury uh, around the development of the infrastructure and the incentives that go with that, um, uh, you would be very happy to hear that we now have an opportunity to actually develop the infrastructure uh, that is lagging behind in a take win and there are plans afoot and discussions at a very advanced level between a business and a take win uh, to advance uh, that cause. Sure. And within a take win, you also have an economic uh, zone, uh, uh, which we call the, uh, the Dume a trade port. If you look at the incentives that are in place and uh, that to encourage the investment into the uh, Tegwini, uh, you know, uh, that, that those incentives by the Department of Trade, in the, uh, trade and in the Industry okay. make it, uh, uh, make a Tegwini quite an attractive uh, destination. Uh, lastly, Maybe let me also talk about uh, some of the uh, infrastructure uh, features uh, 
uh, you know, which which make a Tewili and KZN quite attractive. I, I can tell you without the shadow of doubt that uh, a, a KZN is going to be the first province in the country uh, to develop the gas to power uh, 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 plans to that point, as Busha indicated earlier, uh, Transnet is in advanced stages of uh, uh, granting a company uh, the rights uh, of concession uh, to develop a uh, LNG, first LNG terminal in, 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 in South Africa. The impact of that uh, in terms of the provision of energy by the uh, a private sector in partnership with government. It's so huge. Uh, so when you are talking about uh, the, uh, the partnership in the provision of that much needed infrastructure uh, around the energy, the, the opportunities are quite uh, a galore as we speak. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tembe. Mr. Temba, I would love to hear a whole lot more, but I think that you have left us with a brom shell just in terms of that major gas project. And uh, we do look forward to further conversations with you, of course, as it does materialize. Thank you so much, sir, for your invaluable additions. One last addition before we wrap uh, things up right now. We're about to hear from the Honorable Councillor Zandile Mieni. She's the Deputy Mayor of the Etegwini Municipality who will be closing off this webinar uh, for us. Ma'am, before we do, your final thoughts. Thank you for the opportunity. I want to greet everyone who's part of this progressive uh, platform. As a Teguini municipality, we pride ourselves because we believe that it is now or never that we connect with people from all over the world in terms of making a point that we develop our economy because at the end of the day, as we are part of the international community, it's one of our priorities that we need to make it a point that uh, we open space for business. And I want to ensure all the investors that indeed they can come and invest at Etewini because when you look at uh, all other uh, metros in our country, Etewini is growing business and uh, there is stability because all investors will understand that one of the key things that they believe in is also to make it a point that they go and invest the money where there is stability. Stability is at Etegwini and will continue to make it a point that we create space and even the bylaws that will not make them to be able to invest at Etegwini. I thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, for leaving us with those words from the late Alvis Presley, uh, the uh, song, It's Now or Never, essentially tomorrow will be too late. But I think that uh, what we have heard uh, so far in the past two hours is the opportunities that abound in the uh, city of Durban and the Etiquini municipality, the um, seriousness that the leadership is taking in ensuring that investment opportunities are realized, and of course, the excitement, as it would seem, and the positive lens that the private sector is uh, viewing the opportunities there are from the blue economy, the infrastructure economy to uh, what we are seeing in property development. And these are investors not only here in South Africa, but also over in the U.S. We look forward to a lot of those opportunities, of course, being realized into reality, much needed reality for the growth of the uh, economy and by virtue the uh, growth of the uh, South African economy. That does bring uh, to a close uh, this webinar on the Inner City Regeneration Business Investment Webinar. And I'd like to thank everyone who joined in, including our online audience from all over the world, Africa and the US specifically. Good morning to you guys, of course. But uh, from myself, Evie Peters, and the team here at CNBC Africa, it's goodbye.